Onslow Square is a prestigious garden square located in the area of Kensington, London. It is renowned for its elegant Georgian and Victorian architecture, characterised by grand terraced houses and stately facades. The square is adorned by beautifully landscaped gardens, providing a serene retreat for residents amidst the bustling city. Onslow Square has long been favoured by affluent residents and is considered one of the most desirable residential addresses in London. Its proximity to Kensington High Street and the cultural attractions of South Kensington adds to its allure, making it a sought-after location for those seeking luxury and sophistication in the heart of the city. In 1954, the Rennie family lived at number 59 Onslow Square, which is notable as having been situated just a few hundred yards from a hotel where serial killer John Haig, infamously known as the Acid Bath Murderer, resided and planned his murders before his execution in 1949. The property was also within a four mile radius of the notorious 10 Rillington Place, where John Reg Christie murdered at least eight people in the 1940s and 50s. The case resulted in arguably Britain's greatest miscarriage of justice, where Timothy Evans was hanged for killing his wife Beryl and daughter Geraldine, and was posthumously pardoned when it was concluded that Reg Christie had murdered them. Margaret Rennie, known as Maggie, was a former showgirl who was married to the British film star Michael Rennie, who was known primarily for his role as Klaatu in 1951 science fiction film The Day the Earth Stood Still. His other notable works included roles in productions such as Phone Call from a Stranger, The Lost World and The Robe, starring Richard Burton. Maggie and Michael, who had an infant son called David, separated in November of 1953, just months before an incident that would change Maggie's life forever, the murder of her 64-year-old widowed mother, Violet McGrath. In April of 1954, Maggie travelled to Paris, parting with her husband, who had travelled to Rome. Maggie's wealthy mother, Violet, known as Vi to friends and loved ones, had informed her daughter that her flat in Westbourne Grove, Orsett Terrace in Paddington, was to be redecorated, and Maggie offered a bed for her mother at 59 Onslow Square whilst the renovations took place, an offer she delighted in accepting. Maggie stated that she would return to the property at Onslow Square on the 10th of May, at approximately 3pm on the 10th of May, Maggie did return home. She was puzzled that the curtains were drawn at that time, and she further noticed that bottles of milk had not been collected from the doorstep. Holding her 14-month-old son, David, in her arms, dread washed over her as she met resistance from the front door. She found it was off the chain and unlocked. After forcing her way in, there in the hallway, she found the lifeless body of her mother, Violet McGrath. It was reported that she had met her demise in the lounge, with indications from indentations in the thick red carpet suggesting that her body was subsequently dragged into the hall and left leaning against the oak-panelled front door. One of Violet's nylon stockings had been wrapped around her neck, and initial investigations concluded that Violet had been asphyxiated, likely the previous night on the 9th of May, between 11pm and 2am. Shortly after police arrived at the scene, the decorator at her flat in Paddington called to tell her that her flat was ready for her. However, instead, he was informed of her untimely death. Further examinations of the body found two sets of scratch marks on Violet's left thumb and right wrist, and because of how deep the scratches were, newspaper reports stated that police were looking at the possibility that Violet had been killed by a woman, or a small man, with pointed fingernails. 
A witness recalled seeing a young woman leaving the Kensington flat on the afternoon of Sunday the 9th of May, which supports the police's theory that the crime was committed by a woman. The witness account indicated that the woman had departed between 1pm and 2pm. However, authorities noted that Violet was confirmed to be alive beyond that time. Described as approximately 35 years old, standing at 5 feet 5 inches with dark hair and a dark complexion, the unidentified young woman was reportedly attired in a printed dress, a short coat and flat shoes. Additionally, she was observed carrying a travel bag with white trim and a brown bucket-shaped shopping bag. On the opposing side of the argument, however, some investigators believed it would be difficult for a woman to strangle a person to death, more so after it was found that the stocking was tied into a reef knot, which struck police as odd. Police visited an inmate at Broadmoor who had the same modus operandi, however no results came from that visit. A small amount of blood was found at the scene and determined to not have belonged to the victim. It was also concluded that Violet was unconscious before she was strangled. On the 12th of May, reports suggested that police were seeking a taxi driver who allegedly drove Violet and an unidentified friend to the Rennie flat on the night of Sunday the 9th of May. Investigators strongly believed that the perpetrator was known to Violet, and it was noted that items of value such as her ring, a gold lighter, cash and a wristwatch had not been stolen. However, later investigations found that a pearl necklace of little value, along with some money, were unaccounted for. There were also no signs of a struggle or assault. However, strangely, a magazine was found near Violet's body and was opened at a specific page about fingerprints, which struck detectives as odd. The caretaker of the Onslow Square property resided in the room below where Violet was murdered, reported hearing talking between Violet and this unidentified individual, which tended to occur most nights. Investigators were puzzled at how the perpetrator left the property, as Violet's body had been leaning against the front door and there were no indications of unlocked or broken entry and exit points. Michael Rennie had been on a flight destined for the US to carry out some film commitments in Hollywood. However, he was informed upon his arrival in Shannon, Ireland, that his mother-in-law had been murdered. He felt there was not much he could do about the situation, however, he chose to fly back to London to be with his wife. Investigators took a deep dive into the life of Violet McGrath, building a clearer picture of who she was. According to neighbours and friends, she was a sweet, charming and attractive woman with a bright smile and a unique purple streak in her silver hair. After routinely finishing watching television every night at 9pm, she would frequently go out and visit bars, pubs and clubs, sometimes until the early hours. She was a very sociable woman who had many friends, both male and female, who described Violet as a cheery person and the quote, happiest woman on earth. At various saloon bars, Violet would frequently talk about two loves of her life, Maggie, her daughter, and her grandson, David. Basil de Moulin, the owner of a pub Violet went to almost every night, said that, quote, she was a delightful person, kind, intelligent, and thoughtful. Among her friends and loved ones, however, there were suspicions regarding her life behind closed doors, away from the bustling nightlife. Violet was known to regularly visit a pub named the Gloucester Arms, just around the corner from her flat in Paddington, and tended to return home at 11pm. She would normally return home in the company of another person and never in a group, which police found unusual. It was described by the media as, quote, a constant stream of visitors who came to her flat for reasons unknown. A statement made by the friend of an unnamed woman told investigators that Violet had seemed uneasy in the days leading up to her murder. 
Violet allegedly told the woman, quote, I'm frightened. Someone means to do me harm. It was reported police were following up on this statement. However, any results, if there were any found, were not made public. At one point, police theorised that she was the victim of a skeleton key thief who managed to gain access to the flat. However, again, police couldn't get their heads around the fact that whoever committed the crime managed to escape the property unnoticed. The police also mentioned their search for an unidentified individual who allegedly requested the telephone number for Violet McGrath's daughter's flat at the Gloucester Arms pub. However, this number was not listed in the post office directory. The police scrutinised letters discovered in the flat from family friends, yet they concluded that none of the contents offered any leads to solve the crime. However, the letters did disclose Violet's association with a man named Larry, whom she had frequented public houses with in the final six months of her life. Authorities indicated that limited information was available about Larry beyond his connection with Violet. Subsequently, it was revealed that Larry had been located in Germany, where he was attending singing lessons, leading to his exclusion from the investigation. An 18-year-old art student, residing adjacent to the flat where Violet McGrath was discovered deceased, recalled that while she was in bed on the night of May 9th that she heard abrupt banging noises past 11.30pm, followed by gasping and choking sounds. According to reports, she told police that it sounded as if someone was being murdered. However, she later retracted her statement, saying her comment was made in jest. Despite their efforts, police were unable to find a motive for the crime. According to Maggie Rennie, her mother had no known enemies. At the time, many homeless people wandered the streets of Kensington, and police did not rule out the possibility that Violet had become victim to one of these homeless people. An aircraft electrician became the main focus for police when he was found to have numerous abrasions on his hands, some which investigators concluded were fresh on the 9th of May, the last day Violet was seen alive. The coroner sought the professional opinion of a doctor, who said that the scars and fresher abrasions were consistent with having ripped off some sort of stocking suspenders, the statement of which the aircraft electrician strongly opposed. He stated that he was consistently getting marks and scars on his hands from his job. An actress came forward and stated a ring of hers had caused scarring on the aircraft electrician's hand. A painter and decorator claimed familiarity with the aircraft electrician for over two decades, stating that he had encountered him on Saturday, May 8, 1954, around 10.30pm, at a cafe located at the junction of Prade Street and Edgware Road. Additionally, he recalled observing Violet McGrath and the aircraft electrician in the saloon bar of the Gloucester Arms. The landlady of the Gloucester Arms stated that the aircraft electrician was a customer and had owed her husband some money, however he had managed to pay it back. Police were suspicious of this, as £15 of Violet's money was unaccounted for. The aircraft electrician paid his debt of £2, 13 shillings and a sixpence on Monday the 10th of May. The verdict of Violet McGrath's inquest, convened on Friday, August 13th, 1954, concluded that she was murdered by person or persons unknown. Seventy years later, the death of Violet McGrath remains shrouded in a veil of mystery. Albeit tinged with the passage of time, hope for answers in the case remains.